Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share a prophetic teaching and prophetic insight on and a prophetic word on the Hebrew New Year 5784. So there's a prophetic meeting and prophetic expression to each new year on God's biblical calendar. So I'm going to teach a little bit about that, but I want to say that this is a year of the open door. So I'm going to share on pay and on Dalet, which is um, the pay is the decade that we are in, 80, and Dalet is the the year, the four that we have entered into on God's Hebrew calendar, the biblical Hebrew calendar. And I want to, so I'm going to share in this video um, about the Aleph bed, which is where we get the Hebrew calendar from and the meanings from. And then I'm going to go into the prophetic word and how that word has formed its, its prophetic expression over this year. So how I came to the conclusion and other prophetic voices that I listen to and follow have come to the conclusion that it's the year of the open door. So I'm going to get into that. Before I do, I'd like to ask you to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And so I'm going to, uh, first of all, I have some stuff here. I'm going to start with um, the scripture that I believe is important for us to put to mark for this year. And that is 1 Corinthians 16, 9. Lord bless your word. It says, for a great and effective door has been opened to me and there are many adversaries. So let me break that down out of the Greek. Um, a great, a mega, a big, wide open, uh, effective, powerful, working, uh, effective door has been open to me. And that word door is gate or opening. So a mega powerful door gate or entrance has been opened to me. But there are many adversaries, many people that oppose, many things in the spirit realm that do not want to see you come into the gate, the door to your future that God has for you, the plans and purposes that he has for you. And so, but God has already made a way. And so I'm going to get into this prophetic expression and how we break down the meaning of the biblical new year. And the thing about it is the Jew, the Jews in Israel and all over the world still follow this calendar. We live our life by the Gregorian calendar. It's September 17th and our Gregorian new year is January 21st. So we count our years by that. We go to work. Tomorrow's Monday. I have to go to work. We count our time and our years by the Gregorian calendar. But there's other calendars in the world and the Hebrew or the Jewish and biblical calendar is the is the calendar of the Bible. It is the calendar that God tells time by that all prophecy that you see in the Bible about the end times and everything that is supposed to happen is set to that calendar. So even as Christians in under a new covenant and a new testament, it pays, it is important that we heed and understand some of the feasts that Christ hath fulfilled in that calendar and some of those feasts that are um, set according to God's calendar, um, he's going to come back and fulfill. And so it's important that we understand that that calendar is part of God's plan and it outlines it. And we rejoice in the things that Christ has already fulfilled. And we look forward and rejoice into the things that he will fulfill. But there's a reason why the Jews and some Christians um, celebrate or at least acknowledge them as they come around in time because it gives us markers. And with every year, God gives a prophetic expression. He puts voice and sound and prophetic uh, meaning to each year on his calendar. We call it the Jewish calendar because the Jewish people were God's people, but it's the Hebraic and Jewish and God's biblical calendar. It is his calendar. And so I want to get into this. And so, um, like I was saying, the seasons change, right? But time keeps moving forward. And so the way that God's uh, calendar works, I'm going to start with the alphabet. And I've made videos on this, so I'm not going to get really deep. But unlike our English alphabet, which um, each letter represent, represents a phonic sound, and when put together, it forms letters. 
yet they have no expression or value outside of the wor words that they form. Each symbol in the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet versus alef al alphabet, each alphabet represents a letter, a number, and it has a pictorial value within itself. So a prophetic expression that there's a letter. So the letter Dalet and the num Dalet is four, right? But it's also a Hebrew letter that you can put together and create meaning out of it. But in that letter and in that uh, number, there's also a, rep a pictorial representation that gives prophetic meaning to what that, that letter represents. And so these, I believe, are the best way I can put it is that they are heaven's expressions, uh, reality hidden in Christ, waiting to be fulfilled waiting to unfold and be fulfilled in Christ. So this is how God, so when we look at God's calendar, we can see um, how he is unfolding his reality and his will and his purposes and plans through Christ and through time. Linear time keeps moving forward, but seasons are cyclical and they keep repeating themselves. So we go through these years and time goes forward and it's another year, but we have these Rosh Hashanah. We have like for us, we have the new year. We have the Easter. We have Christmas. We have these seasons. And so God has his times and seasons. So the Hebrew word for year has the same root word as to repeat or return and to change um, or new season. And so the biblical calendar revolves around these seasons and cycles and events, these feasts. And so there are special times of blessings that recur at their set time in each year. And a, a new year from a Hebraic perspective is both and I'm reading from my notes a little bit, a new prophetic season and a recurring set of events. Every year, God's, at God's appointed times, he gives us an opportunity to advance in his purposes and plans for our lives. Now, we can have, it can happen in a moment, just like the way that the Lord changed the year for the children of Israel on Passover. He said, this shall be a beginning of year to you. So for the Hebrews and Jewish people, there is the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah, where they start their new year, their civil year at, and then there is the Passover, and they still keep that as well. So there's the fall feast, which we are entering into, have entered into, and then the spring feast. And so this is really, I believe, is this the seventh month? The seventh month in the year that where Passover started, if we count from Passover, but then it's the beginning of the uh, counting of time. In the, but the feasts start in Passover, but we would think they start at Rosh Hashanah because the way it goes, right? So I hope I'm not confusing you. I have a booklet for that. And But what I want to get into, I just wanted to give some context if you have not ever heard those things. I want to teach into this prophetic word. And so the word um, pay which is the 80 in 84, 5784 is the year that we have entered into. And so that word 80 is pay, P-E-Y, and then four is Dalet. And so the prophetic expression and meaning in both of those words, when we put those together, that's how we get the prophetic expression in this specific year. And so for Pay, it is the word for mouth or speak and to open your mouth to say, to prophesy. Now, we know that we can do those things in any time in Christ Jesus, but there's a, a special prophetic anointing in a year where you, a, a decade, so the 80, the pay record, represents the decade that we are in, in God's calendar. And then, so it's pay, mouth, open, speak. And then Dalet is a picture of a door of a man bowing down in worship and humility, knowing that that his way into God's presence is through the door of worship and humility, that he has to go through the door of Christ to bow down and have an ear to hear the Lord. And so when we talk about an open door, we're talking about there is, and there is a, um, 
this is the year when you're going to go through the door, but you're going to have to hear the Lord speak to you. And you're going to have to heed what you hear him say at the gate, at those intersections, at those intersections where, where there's decisions to be made that can open up the way that he has for you. So there's a door that is open, already prepared for you for your next season. And you're going to have to hear God speak to you. And you're going to have to release the prophetic utterance, what God says about you in faith in order to open the door. So the key, I would say to the doors that God has for us is obedience and faith and to speak with our mouths. I believe, therefore I have spoken. We have to believe and we have to say what God says about us at the gate because what happens is life and death are in the power of the tongue and so sometimes the enemy waits for us to get stressed out in those moments when it really matters he waits for us to say the wrong thing and that can either either close or open a door it can usher us into a new season or we can say the wrong thing and be locked or snared by the words of our own mouths and so when you think about a battle, when you think about the children of Israel going into the promised land, at, in that season when they were supposed to go forward, what came out of their mouths was doubt and fear. But Caleb and uh, Joshua had another spirit. They said, if the Lord is pleased with us, we're able to take the land. I believe that's what they said. Uh, but they spoke in faith and said that we are able to go in. The other people said, we're bred for them. They are giants and we're gra like grasshoppers in, in their sight and in our sight. So they spoke the wrong thing at the gate of their promised land when they should have said, we can take it. We can go in. God can do it. They didn't say the right thing. So when you are going through a gate where there's adversaries like there was in the children of Israel's promised land, you have to agree with heaven. And in order to do that, I've already talked about that on this channel in this year um, prior or earlier this month, is that God is calling us to return to a place in worship, to the original intent for which he had prepared us and planned. And he knows the plans that he has for us, Jeremiah 29, 11. So many people have settled or said, well, let me take another route. And sometimes that's all you can do. Just like Ruth and Naomi, there was nothing to go back to. So they had to, even in her returning home, it was a new season. Um, sometimes there's not a, a, a way to restore what was lost, but God can take something and make beautiful ashes. He can do a new thing in a new season with new people in a new time in a new place. But we have to, re he has an original intent and plan for your life. And if the people that were supposed to fulfill it with you do not, then he will send a new people. He will send a new situation to fulfill his plans and purposes in the earth. And so the first thing he wants us to do is to return to him in prayer. Go back through that gate. So when we talk about returning to God in prayer, there is a gate there. God calls us to ascend into worship that we might hear. So he says, come up here and I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know that you cannot see outside of my presence because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. He will show you the path of life, Psalm 16. And so when we think about that, we, he calls us the gate. There's a gate to come up into the place where we are seated in heavenly places. Yes, that is our place. It's already been won for us. But many of us, as Paul pointed out in Ephesians, he also wrote Corinthians that even though we have um, seats in heavenly places, he then finishes uh, chapter six saying that there's adversity in the heavens. There, there, there are principalities that we're not warned against flesh and blood, but principalities. So sometimes we have to stand to sit in the position that Christ already has given us and take authority and take that. And sometimes that takes warfare and the warfings of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And so we have to come into God. <laughs> so that we can, we have to position ourselves in the secret place. We're already in him and he's in us, but we can be distracted and we can neglect 
his presence and not have the power and authority that he wants us to have and not operate from that position, but operate from our flesh. So he wants us to return to that place because these doors, and I heard a prophet say this, Chuck Pierce, and I love him. I was listening to him as I was sitting home this whole weekend. And he said it this way, um, there are doors that you will go through in a moment, but you have to be willing to hear. You have to be able to hear. And so in this season, it's a time that we want to silence the voices around us so that we can hear God's voice. And in those split second moments, when God is opening up that door, when he says, go now, you get the instruction to do what you need to do to break open into that next door, that next phase of God's plan, that next phase of prosperity. And I don't just mean um, money, but you will be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers, that next phase of what God has for you. And so God is calling us to be still and know that he is God, not to be led away into distraction that can pull you out of your abiding place, your secret place, so that you can hear God from that place in those moments when life and death are in the balance, when something is in the balance. I wish I could give an example from my own life, but it might be, I'll, I'll try. So one time something was going on and the Lord told me to fast, right? It wasn't in my life, but it was somebody I was praying for. And so I'm fasting and I heard the Lord say it was my day to break my fast and something was still going on and I didn't know how it was going to go. But I heard the Lord saying as I was going to eat and break bread with the dear sister and the Lord, don't put anything in your mouth. So we went to Starbucks and we were fellowshipping and I just got coffee because he said you can't eat. And in that moment, in that time, when I heard about what happened, in that moment when God said, continue to consecrate this time unto me in prayer and fasting, setting yourself apart, then I knew that in that moment that God had done what he needed to do because I was standing in the gap. My sacrifice of fasting and standing in the gap for that person was able to turn the gate. And with the enemy meant for evil, God was able to turn and stay the hand. And um, sometimes we say it doesn't take it all that we're already there, but it's a consecrated life. It's a set apart life. It's hearing the Lord. These are spiritual principles in that time. And so me hearing the Lord in that moment allowed him to turn what could have been evil. Another time I recall is my former pastor, I remember I would get an unction when something would happen and to pray for him. And then I would get a call that something had happened and God had already had me pick him up in the spirit to pray through that without knowing. And I would just get a burden and have to stop what I was doing and pray. And even for my children and different things. And if I, I'll be the first to admit that these past three years, the enemy has really been, I have been kind of distracted, kind of. I've been distracted a lot. You know, I've been doing my regular thing, reading my Bible and all of that. But the secret place is the place I've been distracted from, even though I have my daily time with the Lord, that place where you can hear in a moment. And so I am calling myself, God had that word for me, but I believe it's for many of us to return to that place with the Lord, where we don't allow other things to distract us, where we hear God in a moment, in a split second, because God has doors, mega powerful doors, gates and opening access, um, new opportunities for us. Um, Ephesians 6, or is it 5 says, redeeming the time, maybe it's 4, redeeming the time. That word time is uh, a redeeming, uh, yeah, redeem, time is uh, Kairos, not Kronos. Kronos is the time, linear time that keeps moving forward. Forward, And Kairos is the season or a divine window of opportunity, a due season, a set time, a divine appointment that something happens. So he's not saying just, he's not saying at all redeem the days, hours, and minutes, although we're supposed to do that as well. But he's saying re redeem these opportunities that God puts before you. Buy up, take advantage of these opportunities, these chronos moments and opportunities. We will not be able to do that effectively 
an effective door has been opened to me if we don't get into the secret place. And so um, God has already prepared doors for you that to go through. And so do not miss this season by being busy and distracted. Put yourself in a place where you can hear God's voice and then you are uh, quickly and readily willing to heed as in obey God's voice. So hear and heed. You want to be able to hear in those moments where it is imperative that you make the right decision for your life or the person's life that God has you uh, standing in the gap for that he's entrusted you to intercede for. And then you want to heed because many times we hear and we don't think it's God or we brush it off, but it is God and you miss it. And you don't want to have to look back in this season because time is certainly moving forward. And, but the moments, the seasons are passing us by as they come and go, come and go. You don't want to miss the day of visitation as the children of Israel did in that time. Now he brings it back, but there's but so much time, linear, chronos, sometimes has passed that what he intended to do cannot be done like it was. But God is faithful, just like with and Naomi, he was able to make it all work for together for their good anyway. But you want the best God has for you in this season. And so I pray that this year, in this year of the open door, that regardless of the adversaries, the um, opposition, that you would hear God's voice, you would heed his voice, and you would go through the doors that God has for you, the wide open doors of opportunity that God has for you, the mega doors that God has for you to go through, whatever they are in your life, whatever they are, whatever God has purpose and plan for you, whatever is he has written in his book for you, I pray that you would be able to recognize those doors. You would be able to use your keys, which is your voice, pay to say, to speak prophetically and agree with heaven what God has spoken over you and that you would be able to release your faith in a moment and obey God in a moment and break through. I pray that over myself too because I have missed it in seasons. And that's why God is calling us to return to the original intent, re return to our abiding place, return to what he has. Don't settle, just return. Sometimes we're, we're settling because we think we've missed it and we just have to you know, settle for whatever is left. But God says, if you will return to the place with me, if you will not give up on my original intent for you and let me work out the details and believe me, you will prosper. And so I pray that over you. God bless you. Again, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Give this a thumbs up and share it with somebody that you know.